Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Hot Vine 4, where I am joined by Midge Man. Hey, Midge. Hey, Mordred. Hello. Just making sure everything is working. Got to get the music up. Sorry, we've been caught a little bit unawares here because the game is beginning, and we were we were just doing some some chatting, and we got we got caught. So uh, give us two moments, guys, and we will be sorted. But Mordred. Day two of this competition. Are you excited? I am excited. Yes, this is, of course, the continuation of the Kaiserreich Weekly Tournament. Day two, the final day of the finals. So this is when everything will be decided. We are, of course, without a Reichs Pact, so the Reichs Pact are out. But that does leave us with the Entente, the Co-Prosperity Sphere, and the Third International still in contention. And really, it, it could still go anyway. Yes, absolutely. We were discussing last uh, night at the end of the session how the Entente could snipe some VPs essentially away from the Co-Prosperity Sphere. But then the Co-Prosperity Sphere launched this surprise invasion and that they're beginning a war, a, a naval war in Asia. The Entente are yet to respond. If that will stay the same today, we don't know as of yet. Um, and also the Entente are now, so the Entente currently are the ones that are in the two front war. They're fighting the the Third International and the Copro. And a war between the Copro and the Third International is brewing, but not yet fired. Correct. And yeah, the, the attacks on the Dutch East Indies, I think, are actually going to put the Entente on a bit of a back foot. Hopefully this doesn't just open a bridgehead for an attack against Australasia, because that would be a really big blow. That's yeah, one of their main outposts in that region. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I really hope that the Entente get their stuff together as well and just counteract this Japanese invasion. Um, they're, they're losing valuable resources and they're isolating one of their player, Austra players. Australasia now is really under threat here from the Japanese. We've actually got um, Brazilian troops holding out in Port Moresby. I feel like they, there needs to be a faster response here and it's going to be down to the naval movement. Have we seen any naval movement? Australia is still just defending. Uh, what about the US and Canada? Uh, I need to, land, folks. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, let's take a look at the navies, see what they're doing. Not maneuvered I'm not seeing yet. any. Yep. Nope. And also with Canada. Uh, that's air. That's nope. All defensive. No Nothing. reaction here from the Entente. This feels like a misstep entirely. Absolutely agree. Although there are some fights going on in the Caribbean. What's going on over there? Oh, yes, and around. Yeah, okay, there is a lot going on, actually. So there's a lot of uh, naval engagements in the Caribbean. Oh, that's here. Union of Britain versus Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And I did see some stuff going off the coast of Australasia. That's the Japanese blockade of New Zealand, isn't it? Um, let's have a look here. I don't... Just saw... north of it, there we go. Resi oh, wow, that's a lot of convoys just caught out by the Japanese. They've got 48 submarines just hammering against those Brazilian convoys. Let's take if a look you quickly. Zoom in, yeah, sorry, sorry I was going to say. Yes, yeah, they're obviously absolutely. in troops coming in. Oh no, terrible. Yeah, I was going to say, I think this is your uh, Brazilian garrisons. The Brazilian, you know, I've got you bro bro commandos that we've, we've seen throughout this game where they're just like, port defense, yeah, that's a job for Brazil. Um, except they haven't been given the, the support of the navies. The massive Entente navies just not being put to use by anyone. Um, yeah. And yeah, those... Oh, we can't see the, the outcomes, unfortunately, after the actual scene of the crime. But we've also got the uh, Indian submarines coming in as well. And apparently Indian submarines can get some of the lowest visibility in the game, late game. So if the Entente allow India to actually get to that stage, we could see India starting to switch to more naval play. Oh, and we've also got... Oh no, those are Dutch East Indies. These are all... I was watching a feedback video earlier, and he was able to see if there were troop transports being caught. How do we do that? Ah, here we go. Freight trans for freight convoys, troop convoys. Oh. Uh, troop convoys, troop convoys, troop convoys. Feed the expensive ones. Feedback gaming. Honestly, just you learn so much from watching Dave. <laughs> you really do. Yeah, he put out a video about uh, light cruisers and how stupidly strong light cruisers are, which. Definitely something I fully maintain, but he made a very interesting point, which is basically if you can catch troop convoys at sea, that's basically an encirclement. Those troops are lost. You can't just retreat them. Yeah. They are gone. Yeah. Manpower and equipment, full loss. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, which is why not using the Navy like they are is, is very detrimental here from the Entente. Something I want to check, actually, I'll let you control and check. Can we see the Japanese uh, submarine uh, commander? Because we, we actually I just have want a... to see how many troops. Yeah, 143,000 Brazilians killed by the Japanese already. That's And the war has only been going on about a month and a half. That's absolutely astonishing. We should definitely so these, take a look at the Japanese commander because we actually haven't looked at the Japanese Navy much good. at all. No, because they haven't been used. They haven't needed to use their Navy as of yet. This is the first engagement for the Japanese fleet, and this is a pretty fresh Japanese fleet, but it is massive. They've got a lot to work with, and they need to they, because if, if the Entente did manage to pull their navies out, they'd be fighting a lot of ships. Yeah, and I actually quite like this uh, Admiral for the Japanese already. He's got very low defense, which you really honestly don't care about with the Submarine Commander. He's already got Seawolf, Silent Hunter, and Loading Drill Master, which is really good. I, lo I really rate the uh, Torpedo Cooldown, because that basically means you shoot 25% faster, which means more Convoy Sunk. It is great for raiding. And uh, yeah. three attack, three maneuver, three positioning. Yeah, it's, it's a solid Commander, that one. Way better than, I think, the Irish one is at, at the same level. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, there a German player still? That is a good question. So while we're kind of waiting for all that to happen, let's go and take I a don't look. Think no. so. <laughs> I want to see if any of the players have actually changed. So let me just go over to my spreadsheet. So for CoPro, we have got Jedi Raven in Japan. We do. We've got Detropat in Russia. We do. We mm -hmm. have Alan in Ventien. We do. We have Zobertus in India. We do. And we have. Oh no, player! That is a different person, probably. Um, Maybe. I don't know who player is. Player is the default name Hoy gives if you don't set yeah. yourself a name. So it could be, it might not be. It probably isn't the same guy, because then it would just default to their name previously. Name. So it is yep. somebody else. I'm just going to do question mark someone, question mark, because we have no idea who that is. Uh, third international, do you want to go over the th three I players? Yes, um, we've got Stein the 11th, we've got Nada J in Ireland, we've got Macaroni in the Union of Britain, we've got Remco in Spain, and we have Theresa May in Italy. Same team there. Absolutely the same, and what about the Entente? Do we have the same people there as well? Um, from what I can see, uh, we actually might have a different Brazil. Yeah, in Brazil we do, yeah. Yes, yeah, so um, we've got the original Canadian player coming back. So we've got AAA Atlas uh, in Dominion of Canada, Tukum Chasm in USA, we Tedot in Brazil. Um, definitely the correct burb in. Where is this? Uh, Nationalist France. And. Oh my gosh, what's the final. I'm going to wait until you realize because it's a very obvious one. Australasia, we've been talking about it all there the you time. Go. Two Canadian yeah, exactly. teammates is still there. Um, I was like, we've been just uh, So only around. actually one switch in terms of players, and that is Brazil is switched to T dot. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, another interesting thing about. Uh, it's odd. Brazil has been playing really well for them, so to switch Brazil out, I, I don't know if it's a commitment issue or what. Uh, that could spell an issue there for the Entente, who are already plagued by issues. Um, and maybe the the movement of those troops there, that massive loss we've seen in the ocean is because of the transfer of players, and they did not realize that those troops were going to be under threat. Um, could quite easily quite likely, be a massive yeah. detrimental loss there. I would really hope that the Entente was screw Well, that he was screaming at the Entente, saying, where the hell are your ships? Can we take another look at the Entente deployments and see if they've reacted at all yeah, now that they've actually had all those convoys sunk? Um... Okay, Australasia is moving fleet. Hang on. Why no, they're not. It? Blue means that they have that selected, but no no one actually active. Paradox crash. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> that's still showing me Japanese ships there. Oops. And then let Air Controller Canada do its work. Like, let's let's just, re while we're back in the game here, take a look at Canada. Um, and let's look at these air wings. We're up to 14,000 fighters. We have 600... Bombers. Strap Ooh. bombers, 500 attack bombers. You put you that and 13,000 casts. There's so much damage to be done here. 1,300, <laughs> not 13,000. No, 1,300. Sorry, yeah, 13,000 <laughs> casts. All of the casts. Yeah, no, sorry, 1,300. Slip of the tongue there. But 
They are the most sizable air controller in this game. Um, I'm pretty sure. I will double check the air controllers actually uh, while we're here. Let's check uh, Siam. So I am starting to catch up now. They were at 2,000 for a long time. And then Union of Britain. Union of Britain has stifled a bit. There's uh, still 8,000 with uh, 800 tactical bombers. So not to not to be forgotten. Um, also, Union of Britain gets some pretty good buffs to their planes, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, so does Canada. One. That's true. Yeah, Supermarine are really decent. Um, Canada definitely does as well, though. You're you're correct. Correct. Yeah, the Trans Canadian Airlines is really good. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna try to look at the is it the government screen? Hang on. One of these. Yeah, the Hawkeville Canada. Yeah, same as oh, the uh, Union of that. Britain. Bonuses, basically. Yeah, so that's the thing. They need to get their... Everyone's so focused on the land war right now when the air and naval game could change this entire conflict. Can I just take control? I just want to see where Absolutely. their fleets are actually Absolutely. deployed. Like, what are their objectives here? Because there was a good question. Like, Australasia, is their fleet literally just in port? Is that all they're doing with it? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> They're in the Atlantic for some reason. So despite the fact that the islands off their coast are being attacked, they're raiding the Atlantic. That seems like a really bad use of their ships. They do have some escorts, though they're actually not at sea. They're just docked in the North Island. They're assigned to that location, but not actually deployed there. They have a whole bunch of ships in the reserve which aren't even being used. They do have a strike... Oh no, so they have their submarines raiding the Damara plane off the coast of Brazil, because of course they are. And then they have 130 various ships, again, just docked. No, not even docked. They're, they're just sitting here at sea, using organization and also fuel. What? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they're just hiding. They are just hide. That is a hiding spot right there. Why? Did they get cut off? Uh, are they being port striked right now? Is is that what's going on? Um, I mean, possibly. No. And you can just base them down here in Tasmania. They're not going to be able to reach you there. True. Nope. I don't know what Australasia is doing. I think they just don't have a clue when it comes to navies. Brazil. Nope, they still. No, those are arms cruisers. Yeah, they did lose their, their okay. battleships. But they're in the Mediterranean. They are. They have a proper setup. They have um, submarines being used as a patrol, which then calls in the strike fleet, which is the, the surface fleet. So, yeah, they're, they're set up correctly, but I think that's just a leftover from the war against the Reichs Pact. Then we have National France, and we were wondering what kind of fleet they had. I was right, they do actually have a pretty big one. So they are currently guarding the Mediterranean with their destroyers, which is fair enough. They are raiding, again, the Cap Verde plane. Well, yeah, sure, they're catching some stuff. But that's not where they're needed right now. And then they have a lot of capital ships. They just don't have the screens for them because they're using all of their screens for a convoy escort, which is fair enough, I, I get that. But they, they have the potential to do that if they just built a couple of really, really cheap uh, screens. And they are desperately in need of repair. They're currently on uh, never repair, and they are badly damaged. So they should probably dedicate a couple of shipyards to doing that in the meantime. And then, of course, we've got Canada, which is another nation that has a really big fleet. Their surface fleet is here off the coast of Africa. Their submarines are in the northwest coast of Canada. Those submarines and, have been training uh, all game so far. I think they've just been forgotten about. Yeah, they're, they're just not at all using their fleets. And you're not going to be able to beat CoPro if you don't use your fleets. Like, you're not going to be able to, to attack. You're not going to anyone across. if you're not using Hold your on. fleets. Oh, it? these guys are at war. Was that what those pop-ups came up were? They must have been. Oh, wow. The so, CoPro and the 
uh, Third Eye are in war. The French tanks are moving to uh, Cal Calist. I'm going to go with Calist uh, towards Wuj. Um, because you're... Ooh. Oh, it's because we're still paused. We're still paused at the moment. Most yes, the decorations. This, yeah, this is the uh, big war coming in here. This is, again, this is going to be a moment of recovery here now for the Entente. However, a war has erupted in South America because of this. Yeah, so Chile and Argentina have actually invaded Brazil because, of course, Brazil's garrisons just got sunk off the coast of Australia. So Brazil itself is starting to feel the pressure from yeah. their benevolence towards their allies, which is just unfortunately just not being reciprocated by their allies. Yeah. Brazil and Australasia kind of being forgotten by the rest of their team here. Why die for Canada? Though. Why die for Canada? <laughs> yeah, wars are still breaking out. We do have a naval invasion here by Canada against um, Balearic Islands. What's that, Minorca? Oh, that's Majorca, Minorca. I don't know what that one is. Ibiza. Oh, right. Okay, Ibiza. Can we see the Japanese focus tree? I'm always a little bit unsure about showing focuses because it shows you what nations are like working towards. Yeah. Uh, same reason that we don't ever look at the logistics because it shows you what equipment they have and what their equipment situation is. Um, one thing I can do, actually, you know what? What I will do is we'll take a look at this from the... Who's going to have the best intel against Japan? Canada? Actually, yeah, Canada's intel against Japan is really good. So we can look because Canada can see this. So they're currently working on the Raikan... What's that? Uh, uh, Whoa! There's nukes. Their atomic program, yeah. They've done land reform. They haven't done the colonial incentives yet to get their islands integrated. They have not done a huge amount on their army. They've maxed out the navy and the naval bombers. They've not done rifle production standards. Doesn't that give them production cost down on rifles? Yes. Yeah. A big... Reduction. Yeah, I know. Whoops. That's why I was like, why has that not been done? Uh, too many other things to do, I guess. Well, like I said uh, previously um, in yesterday's stream, is the CoPro wins this game on Japanese politics, Chinese manpower, and Russian industry. Um, yep. So I guess, yeah, the political paths here and the naval path is what uh, China needs to focus on. Focus on, so understandable if they're not the ones producing the men for the front that they don't don't need to produce the guns uh, uh there is some movement in norway i think i that might oh, be the union of britain yes. uh union of britain cleaning up like. the russian grabs there uh, or is that a russian invasion russian no. invasion of sweden but it's a very very small invasion of just one division more interesting though is the drive of the french medium tanks and how they are actually beating the Russian heavy tanks. Wow. Pretty easily, actually. Oh, no. They've oh, no, sorry, this was Russia's circled. perspective. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Russia's perspective. Yeah, they've been encircled. This is the Russian heavy tanks absolutely piercing through those uh, French medium tanks while the French medium tanks having a, a numerous amount of them and being able to do that, um, s s that sorry, uh, layered defense tactic that we saw from them yesterday is now finding it hard to hold up against an armored Bruntal assault. However, they are still pushing back in places. They might be able to get this defense off. And that's actually an encirclement of a couple of Russian divisions. Yeah, two of the Russian divisions there currently beaten, beaten back by some infantry, but Russia is able to pierce through. And this is going to be a slightly different situation to the armored war from yesterday, because yesterday was medium tanks versus medium tanks. This time it's mediums versus heavy, so it's mobility versus firepower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the problem here, though, with that, is that those the, the firepower isn't going to help them in the numbers game here. Uh, sorry, no, and we isn't. saw... So, because Russia has begun to churn out its medium tank divisions. Um, whilst there's, they're nowhere near the American heavy tank divisions, sorry, yeah, correct, um, there's still more of them than there were, and the French lost a number in the previous war, so I don't know how their stocks have done replenishing that. 
It's a good question. We just saw that the Russians have seven of their heavy tank divisions against the 14 that America had last time we checked. And then France has, 21. whoa, 21. Oh, one. Okay. Mediums. Oh, Having God. just lost two. France are doing that thing with Zhukov again. Come on, d divide it down. Get yourself to the support so that you don't have to micro your infantry as much. Ah, come on. Stop stacking <laughs> Zhukov. In fact, he's not even using a field marshal at all. Waste it. All they need I to don't do is understand split that into why they three. do this. All they need to do is split that into three commanders and put them under a field marshal with a field marshal line, and they'll statistically perform so much better. Ah. Yep. Ah. Yep. That's part of the reason that Germany was able to push the uh, the French infantry so easily. Like French infantry were just paper yesterday. The only reason they were able to hold out was because of the excellent Numbers. tank micro. And they do not have manpower on their side this this time either to sponge some of those attacks into their infantry. Uh, it seems like the Italians are holding most of the line though here. Um, yeah, and we did see that the Italians were really just spamming out the the uh, infantry lines. So Italy and Spain probably doing that. Well, France brings the armor and the Union of Britain, the Air Force. Italy, we, Italy were a little bit of an unsung hero for the uh, the Third International yesterday. They they were the only ally to come to France's aid, and when they did, they did well. And they have to be said that they themselves, the Italian player and the French player, are working pretty hand in hand together in these wars, and they're doing doing a pretty fine job of it. So. Well done there to them. I just want to see if these guys have any anti-tank, because all they need against medium tanks is AT support, I think. And they'd be able to pierce the French uh, mediums. But they're not, they just have artillery. So they're expecting massed infantry attacks, which is... You know, I mean, it's happening down here, but it's not really what's going to be happening elsewhere. Also, I'm seeing some paratroopers. We've got some Chinese paratroopers appearing. Yeah. Okay, interesting idea. Um gonna try and beat the the third international at their own game there uh we have a little bit of a salient going on with the medium tanks pushing but they're about to get cut off themselves it really depends on who wins the race between their infantry and these yep, and, they, and they decided to back off which is wise yes. yeah wise decision there get those tanks out they, they can't they can't lose that many tanks the thing is here the third international need to be careful with their engagement yes they've They've not got the manpower to lose like the, the co-prosperity th sphere have. So every man, every rifle, every tank counts for them. Less Absolutely. Than co yeah. I mean, it counts for both, especially the, the tank divisions. The Russian heavy tanks are going to be ludicrously Absolutely. expensive. And while the French ones are going to be cheaper, their advantage is numbers. And if they lose that numerical support, superiority... Uh, because right now what I think France is doing is they're just picking loads and loads of different fights the the mm -hmm. russian heavy tanks can only be in so many different locations and at the moment we can see from the thick lines that france is pushing slowly but they are making ground here and i also just wanted to take a look at ireland because i almost forgot about ireland earlier with their plucky naval power which right now is just docked i think probably trying to save on fuel They've noticed the Entente's doing nothing with their navies, and they've kind of felt, you know what, I don't really need to act to this. So they're just sitting here, building up their huge flotilla of Tier 3 and 4 submarines. So if yeah, the Entente serious... does do it... Oh! You know what, I know what they're doing. If the Entente does do a naval invasion, they're just going to stick the submarines in the sea tile that led to that naval invasion, just cut off all supply. Yep. Or try to snipe the, um, the, nav uh, the troops as they come in as well. They've got enough uh, concealment to do that with those tier 4 subs uh, and those veteran tier 3 subs that uh, they, they'll be able to snipe divisions before they even land. Yep. Um, which just goes again to show why the, the Entente can't focus on the 3rd International right now and they need to be mo mustering themselves for a uh, co-pro war. So it looks like Brazil is starting to get a, the Argentinian, the Patagonian Workers' Front and the Chilean Invasion uh, handled. They've brought in a lot more troops. Although uh, Chile's bringing more and more men in, and unlike the Entente, Chile is actually using their navy. You know when th you know things are bad when the AI uses their fleets better than the players. Yeah. You really can't play the Entente and ignore your navy. And they are still doing it. They are still getting absolutely hammered by the Japanese and the Indian oh, sorry, submarines. They still haven't like blocked this area or even tried to guard it. Down to double digits in convoys as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. 
It's not just, looking good. No, it's not. The Entente are just kind of being hammered at their own game because they're not even playing it. Meanwhile, Russia did just manage to push back the French that were in Elbing and have once again consolidated the line around Danzig and the Vistula. I think if we see a Back push, it's going to be around here around watch. We've got a pocket encirclement possibly coming here of uh, some Russian heavy tanks. Uh, the Russians have noticed, I think they're pulling their tanks out. This could be turned back on the French quite easily, though. Yeah, we've got the three Russian heavy tanks here smashing the two um, French mediums. We've got a couple of French mediums trying to stop the, uh, the heavies from getting in, but those heavies are just too heavy at this point. And actually, I'm very curious. I'm, ah, let me click on your division. Because uh, I want to see what they're like. They are mechanized, fully mechanized with heavy tanks at this point. And yes, your opponent would be able to see this. We can check yep. what kind of heavy tanks they're using. Uh, they have got T120s. What are they? I hate that's it when the, it doesn't actually say what tier they are. That's that's the tier 3. I'm that is sure. tier 3? Okay. Yeah. And then also the tier 3 tank destroyers. They are bringing a couple of those in, though. They're probably not necessary against France. Against the USA, though, they will be. Yeah. Speaking of which, the uh, the USA, with their heavy tanks, yes, they've built some excellent divisions. They, we have not seen them use them very well. No. As well from the Entente. There's a lot of things in favor of the Entente uh, doing doing work here, but they just haven't messed why we say, oh, here comes the Italians again with those suicide paratroop divisions to disrupt the lines. Disrupting How lines, I... disrupting production, disrupting oil. Plotesi yeah, is the oil. Plotesi is the oil field. And you know what? If they could get enough paratroopers into their former little pocket, they, they could, could be very that. difficult to root out. Yeah. yeah, they could supply that. Get a little Romanian pocket going on. This is going to draw um, Copro members away from the line as well, which... Uh, is uh, it's a big thing uh, that, that might give some movement for those tanks again we might doing this is in there a, the is there a sorry, coming in from the french tanks there slightly north in the the carpathians uh possibly but i was going to say doing this uh airdrop against romania is really smart because the ai is going to pull troops back and in fact we're already seeing them uh do so so these are romanian troops they're basically just playing the ai here and getting them to withdraw troops whereas china who also has the front is like no not worth my time did you did you notice how many? I'm not. I don't want to point it out. Uh, exact numbers for um, obvious reasons, just in case, you know, which I avoid stream seven. But did you see how many uh, Italian paratroopers there were in total? I uh, did not, not. Not landed, but readying to land. It is. It's quite the number. There goes Romania. They've actually capitulated it. That's that's great. That's going to be that's actually surrounding uh, a number of ch uh, Chinese divisions here. This could be a major breakthrough if the French can capitalize. They did have their tanks in position. They there's a the Russian tank. Well, yeah. There's a Russian tank encircled there. They they and they they're calling for it. Uh, the Russians now pulling back, but supply is going to be limited. Can they cut it out? Okay, no. There's more Russian tanks now coming up to Four support. Four heavy tanks down here, but they're all out. They're, oh no, sorry. These no, guys are in supply. They're in supply. It was it was just that one that was cut off for a moment there, but they managed to get back into supply. Still, this is a massive disruption for the lines, and this actually cuts off the Hybiad um, and Russian contiguous line that they had. It does, and it also puts some serious pressure on the the Greek holdings down here. But this is just one massive breakthrough, effectively. Uh, which the French tanks, if they arrive in sufficient numbers, can really exploit. This is where that maneuverability is going to come in. Maneuverability versus firepower. This is playing right into the maneuverability's hands. Yeah, that was a really Although, good use of those paratroopers as well to get that capitulation. But I think the Russian tanks are going to hold the line long enough. 